Okay, um, it's two o'clock here, so I want to go and get started while we see if some others will show up for live. Um, so, um, you know, I'm just reminding people about, uh, you know, we're, we're finishing up tomorrow. So we've only got today and tomorrow to uh, submit the last thing. So hopefully everybody's working on the last assignment. Um, and, you know, the test two is now actually open. So you do need to start that, attempt that sometime before uh, sometime today or tomorrow before the end of the day tomorrow. So, um, I, I did give uh, an example solution for the assignment nine. Um, in, unless uh, those that are here want to ask me about it, I don't think I'm going to go over that. You guys can look at that. Um, um, a, a lot of people got the task one through four. Um, a lot of people are working on five, but didn't get it. I think I only got one or two that completely got task five. One or two were, others were close. So about half the people I think were got it or were kind of close to it. And then the other half though, uh, didn't look like they'd gotten there to task five. So um, a little bit late to remind people, but you know, we, there are textbook readings. Um, I was just remembering. So the example implementation that I gave for the, um, like the remove method, um, comes directly from the readings in the uh, the Schaffer textbook that I had for the uh, for our unit nine on binary search trees. So in particular, if you if you went through and read all this, you'd find that uh, I you know we use different names in the assignment, but he had you know an example of uh, delete minimum um, and um, get minimum, or we call it find minimum uh, for those two things, and then using those in the same algorithm that I posted on the example solution or the, you know, the pseudocode that I suggested. Um, so the remove help is his version of the, the, the private recursive function for remove where we were using overloading, but he used slightly different names in the textbook for the private helper function. Uh, but anyway, you know, so this is the same basically as the uh, example solution. So. Um, you know, and, and also that's kind of a hint though, if you're working on assignment 10, you, know, you might want to, uh, look at the readings um, about um, hashing and stuff uh, that I had, because a lot of the, a lot of that stuff came um, from his discussion on hashing from the Schaffer textbook here. Um, um, all right. And in fact, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on assignment 10, but, you know, um, for those that are here, you know, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them if you want me to talk about something else or start working on something else. Uh, but yeah, so the assignment nine was um, supposed to be on the 4.4, which is about dictionaries, and the 9.4 is really the hashing. Um, so a lot of our stuff on the assignment this week um, is really coming out of that 9.4, where he talks about open and closed hashing and um, gives some implementations of things that we're kind of doing uh, some more stuff on our assignment 10 here. So, um, all right, so let me go ahead. I uh, haven't, haven't um, accepted the assignment yet. So, started on as usual. And I'll check that uh, it looks like all this stuff is working. Although, I see some people have already started on the assignment 10, about three people out of eight. Um, I saw it already created the repository, which is good. Um, so let's let me go and accept it and do the normal stuff, clone it, um, and check that everything's building. All right, so we'll clone our assignment 10 into our sync folder. We'll open up that folder um, and we'll configure it, which should set up our um, uh, BS code and our CLang formatting for the auto formatter. And we'll test that everything's building still. I do not clean and I make all. Uh, and make our tests. And then, um, you know, 
check our uh, auto formatting is working here. So hopefully most people seem to have gotten uh, all those kinds of things figured out. Um, and let's go ahead and create our issue one, task one here. Uh, my, net, my connection might be a little bit slow. Hopefully this is all coming through. All right, so um, in this assignment, we're gonna be working with hashing. So we're gonna be implementing uh, some member methods to implement a closed hashing technique so we can implement a dictionary type of a class that will use a hash table behind the scenes for inserting items into the table and, and removing them. And uh, so we're, we're really kind of doing the same things that we've been doing, like we just did for the binary tree. Our basic things for these collections are to insert new items, new key value pairs into the collection, uh, find a value associated with the key, remove a key value pair from the collection. Uh, but uh, in this case, we're gonna be using a hashing technique instead of, um, of um, uh, a binary search tree or something, you know, something simpler, like just a plain list uh, to do it here. Um, all right, so let's look at the um, tasks here. We've got Five tasks again to complete for in this final assignment. Um, I, don't know, I, I, I suspect people will be um, uh, this will be a little bit easier than our previous binary search tree. So you know, I, I know that the the recursive uh, tree, the recursive nodes, and the recursive functions uh, can be a lot to wrap around. Um, but now we have a little bit of experience with like the idea of a dictionary, a key value pair. Um, 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 our first few methods here, um, hopefully most people will be able to do these relatively simply. So um, our first method, um, um, we're going to uh, add in um, a probe and hash uh, member methods to our hash dictionary here. Um, all right, so these are going to be the basic methods that we're going to be using to um, uh, implement a hash table. So, so hash will just create a, you know, what will take um, a key and will produce a hash of it. Um, and then um, um, we're going to be implementing what's known as a closed hashing. Um, and we're going to use a quadratic probing. And again, you know, you might want to read the textbook uh, readings that I had about this here. So uh, basically what we're doing is we're resolving collisions in our hash table by, you know, if, if we find out that the, the place that we want to, like, for example, insert a new value um, is um, already occupied, if, if that, that hash index is already occupied, um, so we're not going to use an open hash table where we would create like a linked list of off, the, off all the things that collide to the same location index of the hash table. We're instead going to be uh, um, doing some sort of probing in the table, right? So the simplest closed hashing is to just uh, check out the next value, right? So, so if I hashed index five and that's a collision, there's already value in index five, I would then check six. And if that's already has a value, I would check seven. I keep doing that, being careful to wrap around back to the, you know, treating, treating the array as a circular buffer that we're using for our hash table. Um, so being careful to wrap back around. Um, until we find um, a location that doesn't have a value that, so we can insert it in there for our basic insert, right? Um, so that can be uh, a little bit, um, have some performance implications. So just doing a, a linear probing. So sometimes people use a more complex probe. We're going to be using uh, this quadratic probing so that in, instead of incrementing the probe index by one each time, we use a function to determine what the next index is that we're gonna check to, to, to probe um, and, and see if it's, um, for example, empty or, or um, not, all right? So that, that's what our two basic methods do uh, here to start with, the probe and the hash. Um, 
So before I look at the test cases, so there are a few test case um, um, already, um, oops. Uh, my tests aren't running cleanly. Let me do a clean build again, make sure everything's okay. There we go. So, so yeah, there are a couple tests um, um, of some of the existing methods in the hash dictionary class. So, um, but yeah, before I, I kind of get started on the task one, um, let, let me tell a little bit. So, so we're, I, I believe if I remember right, I mean, all your work is going to be member functions of our hash dictionary here. Okay. So um, our hash dictionary is a class, um, kind of like a, a binary search tree or a list. So it's basic interface. So um, things are a little bit simpler this time. We're not using, oh, no, that's not true. So, so yeah, we are using a dictionary base class that defines kind of the API for this function. But if you look at the, the dictionary uh, API, it's, it's basically the same. So I, I really could have, we really could have done the binary search tree, thought of that as a particular type of implementation of this API, right? So this API is really kind of a dictionary API where our most basic things are that we want to uh, find uh, a value based on the key. So look up a key value pair, search, search our collection uh, for a particular key and return the value if it's in there. Um, and we we'll want to insert new key value pairs into the dictionary um, and um, uh, maybe remove uh, a value associated with the key from our collection. Okay, so we're basically going to want to implement those, but using hashing uh, here in our hash dictionary. So our hash dictionary uh, imp, um, uh, inherits from the dictionary base class. Um, but uh, yeah, instead of, instead of using a binary tree to keep track of our key value pairs, we're gonna be using um, a, um, a hashing technique behind the scenes here, all right? Um, so the, the way this works is that we're gonna create a dynamically uh, allocated, dynamically created array of key value pairs, okay? So there's another, um, so we were kind of just using uh, keys and values sort of individually. So, so we've further gone, and again, this is kind of from the, the Schaffer textbook here. So we've defined another class because it's useful for hashing here uh, of these key value pairs. So we really, our hash table is really, a, is, is really an array of these key value pairs here where a key value pair holds a key and a value as, as the name implies. But then, you know, um, our array is going to be instances of these key value pairs, um, and we've got member methods that are going to be particularly useful for this key value pair for implementing hashing. So we can do things about check whether um, um, a particular key value pair instance is empty or missing, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about those, um, or, or set them to be empty or missing here to implement our uh, closed hashing scheme here. So. But anyway, to orient you, so, so this is similar to things we've been doing with like array-based implementations, like array-based lists or array-based uh, stacks and queues. Um, but yeah, so instead of like a, um, a table of um, t just T's, we're, we're keeping a, an array of, of some T's, we're keeping an array of um, key value pairs, okay? So if you look at the constructor, um, in our hash dictionary, um, like for example, the constructor that, that creates an empty dictionary of some size, we dynamically allocate um, a new table of key value pairs, right? So the, uh, another thing that's maybe useful to know right now um, is that the, the default constructor for the key value pairs, uh, did I close that off? Um, So whenever you create an, an empty instance of a key value pair, here's the constructor for that. 
um, it basically sets as empty, right? So we're using um, a, um, a kind of a special thing here. So when we set something to be empty for a key value pair, um, or is it as an example here, um, we have some additional Boolean member variables. So, you know, um, so being empty, we, we keep track of that it's actually empty. It doesn't have a value key value pair in it. So we can use that and also missing here that we'll talk about um, to determine whether we've got a collision or um, um, or that slot is, is empty um, or, or free otherwise to insert a new value or something like that. Um, all right. Anyway, so, so you know, this is really just an array of key value pairs. Um, um, and we keep track of what the size is of our hash table. Um, so that's another member variable, variable allocation size, like we've used with um, array based lists and things uh, in the past here. So, um, all right, so I think that's enough background. So let's 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 go ahead and, and kind of look at the first task here, get started on this. So, uh, Um, so if you follow along here, um, we suggest that you first implement the probe function um, and then, um, then the hash function second, although those are both part of what we're calling task one here, right? So probe, we're gonna use a quadratic probe. And um, basically all you have to do for the, the, the probe is, um, um, you know, as it says in there, we're, we're using, um, a, a quadratic probe where we're going to use, you know, so that's basically the, the, the quadratic function is going to be as AX squared plus BX plus C, or, or um, here I call it C1, C2, C3. So basically it's, uh, it's going to be one X squared or just X squared plus two uh, X plus two. All right. So I, mean, I can't really see this. I should bring up the PDF, but but we're basically using that, but the, with the constants one, two, two for A, B, C, or for C one, C two, C three, right? So all that means is that if the probe index, for example, um, um, is um, is zero. Um, uh, you know, so. Uh, so the, the, basically this is the X value in our quadratic function here. So, uh, so you know, one X squared uh, is gonna be zero if X is zero, uh, plus two X is gonna be zero if X is zero plus two. So you get two as the result there, right? Uh, but if, if X is one, you know, you get one X squared. So that's a one plus two X, so that's plus two plus two. So you get five. Um, and then, you know, uh, one X squared, uh, so X squared when X is two is four. So you get four plus two times two plus four plus four plus two, you get 10. So that, that's where this is coming from, right? So basically um, uh, what you return, if you do a probe, uh, you have to pass in the key uh, and then the probes, what we call the probe sequence number. Um, so we're always gonna be uh, probing our hash table in sequence zero, one, two, three, but, the actual location that we offset from the hash um, um, is, is the result of this quadratic probe function. So we basically have to add this on the hash to figure out what index or what location we're next checking in the hash table when we're doing a probe sequence, all right? So, um, so if you look at this, the, the probe function takes, um, um, a key and uh, basically just an int integer, a probe index as the um, um, uh, second parameter here, right? So the ID is coming from, um, Um, oh, right here, yeah. Um, the, the ID is, in this case, we're using integer keys for this first test, so there might be some later things, but again, these keys and values could be anything depending on um, what we use, but yeah, so in, in this first test, we're using integers for keys, 
um, and actual employee records for values here. Um, though there's another class here of this just a, a simple sort of structure or, or uh, a class like employee records that we're using in testing here. Uh, but but for the probe sequence, we don't really use the ID. So so sometimes uh, for these probe sequence, like our textbook talks about, you might use the key as part of calculating the offset uh, given the, the probe uh, sequence ID. But here we only just use the probe sequence um, and not the, the, the key value in, um, in our probe function, all right? So, um, um, so both probe and um, hash should be private member functions. Um, Probe is going to be returning an integer result. Um, so it returns an integer value. Um, it takes two parameters. So a constant reference to a key um, and an int rep representing the probe sequence index. Okay. So from that, you know, so I'll kind of give you the signature, but it should be a private member function. Um, returns an int result. Um, it takes a, a constant reference to a key. Um, and then it takes a, an integer, which is the probe, um, I call it the, um, um, uh, the probe sequence index. Um, and this is actually, you know, it's not modifying the class. So if I didn't say, we should probably make it a, a constant member function. Yeah, so I did, I did state that. So it is a constant member function in this case. Uh, both the key and the hash are going to be pretty similar. So they're both going to be uh, taking in a constant key reference as input. And they're going to be constant member functions. And they're going to return an integer result, which is really an index that we use either an index into our array or hash table or um, a value that we add into the initial hash value to, to calculate a probe offset. So, so a, a, a different um, index. Um, um, anyway, so that should be enough to um, allow us to compile. Um, our uncommented test case here. Uh, but we haven't implemented the probe, so uh, we should get link errors. We should expect link errors um, complaining about uh, probe um, um, hasn't been uh, is undefined here. Um, so our probe, Put, we'll put in here under the grow hash table if needed. Grow hash dictionary if needed uh, in this case. Um, so since it's returning an int, we can stub it out by just returning zero in this case. Uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit too much, too verbose for a, a brief title, but uh, uh, so given those, calculate um, a probe offset that will be added to the base um, hash value while performing closed um, quadratic probing. Uh, and uh, in this probe uh, method, we don't use the key, uh, but, but we keep it because some probe methods do also use the key as part of calculating the uh, probe uh, sequence.
All right. So we've got the key and we've got um, a um, probe sequence index. Index might not be a good name here. So it's really, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really kind of probe sequence. So uh, like I was saying for linear probing, we just always just, we just start at the hash and then we have one, two, three uh, in our probe sequence. So here, Basically, I mean, you know, uh, uh, we use this to calculate. So, so we want to go one, two, three, but we're going to put that into a function to get the value that we add to the base hash address. But, but I'll keep that. So, so this. Uh, Turns the quadratic probe offset to be added to the base hash um, value you know, for closed quadratic probe. All right. Um, so that should allow it to compile on tests. Uh, oh, um, yeah, got a few things. So this is a member function um, of our hash dictionary key value class, um, and it is templatized on key and values. So we need all that stuff. So I'll just copy from the previous function here. All right, let's try it again. All right, so there we go. So now it's running. Um, so, you know, I'm, I won't give you, I mean, hopefully everybody can figure out the implementation of that, you know, because again, just think of that as X for um, AX squared plus BX plus C, where this is the A, B, and C. So all you have to do is calculate that uh, uh, quadratic um, um, offsets given the input uh, X or the, the probe sequence index here, all right? Um, and then likewise though, for test one, um, we're gonna implement the base hash method. Um, so we're using a hash method that's described in the textbook. Um, um, the the, the mid-square uh, hashing value here, okay? Uh, this, this, this really, you know, our textbook talks a little bit about this. Uh, this mostly only works for things that are kind of integer-like. So you kind of have to do, do different things if, if your keys are more like string-like, if, if they have um, uh, values that can be of different sizes, you know? Um, so, so we're a little bit constrained. This wouldn't work too well if we tried to use string keys or something like that, but we're, we're kind of ignoring that for now and just assuming that these are like, it, it would work for like doubles or things like that too, uh, things that are kind of numeric-like, so. Um, So uh, we're using, uh, we're creating a mid-square hashing function. Um, uh, so uh, let me go ahead and I'll give you the signature for this one too. Um, so it just takes a key and then it returns the, the hash uh, value. So the hash result from that key, all right. Um, I'll go ahead and add in a stub function for this as well.
This is our mid square hash function. So given a hash, um, given a hash key, uh, which needs to be numeric like. Um, this hashing technique, calculate a mid square hash from it. Um, All right. Um, so, so that should allow us to hopefully compile and build, uh, compile and run the tests for the hash function as well. All right, so in this case, um, um, we're testing it with different um, keys, integer keys on this first test that we uncommented here. So that should be the resulting hash table, hash value that you get. Uh, this depends on, um, you know, not only the mid square hash, but also depends on the size of the hash table. So you know, since we initialize our hash dictionary with an empty hash table of size seven initially here, um, all these results are gonna be between zero and six. So zero is the, the lowest um, um, valid uh, hash index up to six. So, so basically we're modding by the allocation size whenever you implement um, a hash function like this, okay? So, um, Again, it sounds comp it, 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 not too tough to calculate the mid square hash. So, so we discussed it here. Uh, so, first of all, like it says in the name, you should square the key. Um, although, uh, don't use the C. Uh, I normally want people to use reuse like libraries like CMath. So, so uh, but here, if you use the power function to raise it to the second power, it'll convert it into a double result. And that's not really what we want right now. So, so you should square it by just doing the simple of multiplying the key times itself. Uh, that, that will get the square of it. Um, and then we're basically kind of assuming that these are 32-bit in. So the, the mid square means what we want is the middle 16 bits. So we want to chop, we're going to do a little bit of bit manipulation if you've never uh, done anything with like bit masks or things in C. So we want to chop off the high 16 bits um, and uh, chop off the low 16 bits and end up with just the, the middle 16 bits. So uh, there's, a, there's different ways you could do this, but uh, as is suggested here, um, um, if, it's, uh, if, if it's a 32-bit value, uh, each one of these in hexadecimal represents four bits. So, uh, so since there's one, two, three, four, five, since there's six Fs here, that means there's 24 ones uh, followed by eight zeros. So if you mask that like that, you, you're, you're masking off the, um, the eight high bits become zeros. So, so you get rid of the high bits here. Um, and then we suggest that you shift it down, right? So, so now you've got the, the middle 24 bits, but if you shift down by eight bits, you'll end up with just the, the middle 16 bits as a result. When, when you shift down, it shifts zeros into the position if you don't know how bit shifting works. So, so by doing a mask and a shift, uh, you'll get the middle 16 bits of a 32 bit value, which is what we want basically here. Um, and then finally though, you know, kind of important thing for, for hashing techniques is you're always, however you're manipulating and creating your hash function uh, for your, from your key, uh, you're always then need to um, recast that, that value back into a valid index for the current 
hash table that you have, right? So, so we keep track of our hash table using the allocation size. So you have to, to mod uh, the result of your square uh, and taking the middle bits. Uh, and then you mod that by your, by your allocation size to get a valid index between zero and one minus the allocation size. And that's the uh, actual hash value that gets returned uh, from this particular implementation of a hash function. All right. And yeah, looking at these tests, uh, the, you know, these sh these should be the values you get if you're using a 32-bit integer. Doing the hash um, as um, um, suggested, um, and in this case, you know, we've got a table that's size seven. Um, Um, and then, so I should move on, but then there are, there's still more test cases for like task one. Oh, there's one more for task one. Um, and this third one, if you get your probe and hash working, um, uh, we're basically redoing some tests, but we change the table size to make certain that you're, you're uh, modding by the, uh, the, the correct table size when you're doing things like doing the hash function. So. Um, all right. Then let's talk about the rest of the tasks and I'll give some hints on um, um, the signatures for these things and stuff like that. So we're, we're building up so that we can implement the, the find, the insert, and the remove using our hash table. So um, for task two, yeah, for task two, we're going to implement two more um, private helper functions. So basically, if you implement these the way described, it makes it relatively simple to implement the insert, um, find, and remove. So, so basically, insert, find, and remove. The, the public methods um, are just going to be calling uh, one or both of these um, to do the work, to do the actual work for the most part, right? So um, the purpose for probe for available slot is we're going to implement a closed um, uh, hashing probe, um, but we want to keep going until we find a slot that's available. Okay, so slots that are available either um, are um, missing or um, um, they're uh, available, unused, right? Um, so, oh, and so, so um, like I says here, so a probe for available slot, we're going to, start with a particular hash key um, and we're going to keep probing using the, the quadratic probe sequence uh, until we find the first empty or missing slot along our quadratic probe sequence. All right. Um, so yeah, so the, the basic algorithm for that first one is um, you start by just, uh, you're, you're going to get a key as input uh, as the only parameter. So the, the, the probe for available slot takes a key as input and it returns a, a hash uh, index. So, so the, the, the result that it returns should be a hash index, what I call a probe slot here in the test. So this will be a value between zero and the hash table size. So, so zero and six for hash table of size seven, right? Um, so the basic algorithm is that you first call the hash function that you did in task one to get a kind of a home slot number. Uh, and then we're actually going to also um, call probe with an index of zero to get uh, an offset. OK, so so the actual value for the hash is not the first location that we start off with the pro with this quadratic probing. So basically, um, you add. Um, the actual slot that you want to probe by, so you add the, the home hash value to the result from calling um, probe, uh, initially probe with an index of zero, right? You need to add those together. Um, 
um, maybe I didn't describe it here, but um, I mean, the result of adding those together could end up going past the end of your array. So you probably do have to do a mod by the allocation size to, to make certain that you correctly wrap around, right? Um, uh, but anyway, yeah, add those together. And then, then uh, so in a loop here, um, um, if that resulting uh, probe slot, as I'm calling it here uh, in the assignment description is empty or missing, then we're done. And you wanna return that, that first probe slot that you found along the probe sequence. Um, as the result of the, the probe for available slot, right? Otherwise, you're going to keep um, um, searching. So basically, you know, you start at a probe index of zero. The next time, the probe index should be one, right? So you don't have to redo the hash. You can do the hash once just before you do the while loop. But inside the loop, you should be calling probe. But the second time, you should be calling it with a, a index of one, adding that probe to the base hash, being careful to potentially um, you know, wrap it around um, and, and keep doing that until um, you find an empty or missing slot. All right, um, so that's what the, the probe for available slot is supposed to do. So, you know, with this initially empty dictionary, um, Um, so all slots are initially empty, so it doesn't do much probing, but you know, right. So if, if you uh, do a probe for available slot on ID one, uh, you get back uh, the probe slot of two. So again, remember the, the, the hash key is zero, but um, the, the probe for a probe index zero um, for a quadratic probe gives you a two. So if you have those together, um, that's why it ends up being, you know, since everything is, is empty initially you get a, a result of two, right? Um, or likewise for ID of, of uh, for a key of 25, that hashes to a value of two, um, but you know, the initial probe sequence uh, is also two, so you get a four um, and, and, and so on, right? Um, So the probe for key slot, yeah, I didn't describe it as much because it's pretty similar, all right? So it should be almost identical to the probe for available slot. Um, it has the same function signature. So if you get the function signature, you know, that you're inputting the key and you're returning back uh, an integer, which is your uh, probe slot that you found doing while you're probing. Um, the difference is that, uh, so the, the purpose of the probe for key slot, um, is, is, yeah, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to search um, as, uh, this is gonna be used by find um, and in other places, but given that key, we wanna try and find the, 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 the the, the slot in our hash table that that key is actually at, right? So, so we're not looking for an empty slot to like maybe insert a new value. Uh, but we want to try and find um, that, uh, that that key that's in the table here, right? Um, so basically there, there's two kind of stopping conditions. Um, so if like at, at this step here, uh, you're going to test if the, uh, the the key at that slot in the hash table is equal to the key that you're doing the, the probe on. So if you find it, then you want to return that probe slot. So, so that was an example of a successful return. Um, or if you ever come to a, a probe slot that's empty, uh, you want to return that probe slot, okay? Um, So if, if the slot is missing, uh, you, you want to keep going, okay? Because um, as I talked about kind of in our lecture videos, you know, so um, uh, there, there's a little bit of a, and, and our textbook talked about, uh, that there's this problem with closed hashing uh, for the removal. So if you remove um, a value that was on a probe sequence for other values, 
you need to, to remember that there used to be a value there. You can't stop on that because uh, your probe sequence might have to go over values that were there but get removed if you're like searching for an existing value. Right? Uh, so that's why this uh, probe for key slot stops either when you find the key or when you find an empty one. And then basically, for example, the find method is just going to reuse the probe for key slot, but it's going to look at what was returned. And if that probe slot that's return has the key that you were looking for, then you return a successful result in the find. But if it returns a slot that was empty, that means that the, the search failed, um, that, that key wasn't actually in the table, uh, in which case you throw an exception, um, as usual, um, I believe, for the find there. So. Um, all right, so hopefully everybody can get those two then working. They're not too big. Um, um, so after that, kind of like I mentioned, it should, it, it, you should find it, unlike the, the previous assignment, that then implementing the public insert, uh, find and remove uh, are relatively simple reusing those two member methods. Um, those two private member methods. And those two private member methods are reusing the probe and the hash. Okay? So you're reusing all four of the private member methods uh, directly or indirectly. Um, so for uh, we start with insert. Um, um, so you know here when you're working on these last three tasks, you should um, um, like we were doing before, you should uncomment the uh, definition of the function in the base class, the dictionary class in this case. Um, but yeah, this this here tells you kind of the signature for insert. It's the same signature that we had in the previous assignment. So insert, we give a key value pair, it's going to insert that key value pair into an empty slot or a missing slot in the table. Um, so to implement insert, um, we're not going to allow duplicate key value pairs in, in this implementation or a hash table. So um, it's suggested that you first call probe for key slot, uh, which will return uh, the, the slot that either has the key that you're trying to insert newly um, or is empty, right? Um, and if it has the same, if it returns a slot that has the key that's the, that should be the same as the key that you're searching for, that's what probe for key slot does. You, you should uh, throw the uh, an exception in that case, the uh, dictionary duplicate key insertion exception here. Okay. Um, If the, the key is not a duplicate, um, it is possible the table is actually, the, the hash table behind the scenes, the array is actually full um, by our definition here. Um, so you should call the, the grow hash dictionary if needed. Actually, um, this is kind of a bit of an aside, but uh, there's performance issues. I believe it's, I talked about it in our lecture video and in the, uh, the readings in the textbook. So normally what you do is you keep you keep hash tables, uh, arrays that are being used as hash tables about half full um, be because uh, as they get more and more full, the, the, the probe sequence is going to get longer and longer. So basically performance degrades and starts to become more like linear rather than constant time um, if you get much more than halfway full in your table. So the, the grow hash dictionary if needed uh, method um, that's given to you basically grows the table if the size is half full or bigger. Right. But, but, but yeah, you don't have to worry about that. So after growing the table, you want to uh, again do the, uh, you want to uh, probe for an available slot this time. So you should have proven that you, you're not trying to insert a duplicate key. So, so you don't have that key already in there. So if you call probe for available slot, it should return the, the first slot on the probe sequence that's either uh, empty or missing. Um, and then you're going to insert that key value pair uh, into the hash table um, at that indicated slot that was found, that, that empty or missing slot. Uh, and finally, don't forget to, 
to increment the size by one, right? So this this function should end up being um, um, almost like five or six lines of code, except except you do have to do check make an if statement and throw an exception um, if you detect that there's a duplicate key there. Um, um, yeah, there is um, there is a call the grow hash dictionary if needed actually uh, uses insert. So you should get started by making a stub method, um, and then later on you do need to uncomment that in the grow hash dictionary if needed. Uh, once you've got your stub method working. Um, 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 all right, and then uh, find is actually going to be simpler than uh, than the insert. So um, uh, find and remove are actually very simple. Uh, we're using so for find, basically the probe for key slot implements find. Um, so you can call probe for key slot, um, and remember it returns either the the slot in the hash table that had the key, or it returns the first um, empty slot that it came to, right? So then you return, you, you test that return slot. If, if it's empty, then um, somebody tried to define on a key that wasn't the table. So we throw an exception in that case. Otherwise you found the correct slot. So you return the value um, of that, that slot, the pro for key slot return that gave you there. Um, and then re remove is almost identical to find. Um, um, it's got the same uh, API. So you give uh, a key in both cases whether you're trying to find it or remove it. Um, so the only difference between it and find is that in step three, uh, um, step three here. So step three here for find, you just return the value. So for here, you're, you're, you're returning the value that, that you're removing, um, the, the value associated with the key that you're removing here. Uh, but before you return the value, you should set that slot to be missing. Okay, so this is, the, this is where the, the missing is done because you're removing that. But since we're using closed hashing, other things that that, that value, key value pair that you're removing from the hash table might be on other, uh, uh, probe sequences. So we have to indicate that uh, it's not that it's empty, uh, but but there was a value there that's now missing, right? So you call the set missing function um, on your uh, key value pair, set it missing, and then you remove that. Then, then you return that value um, that you just removed um, out of the table. Um, all right, so yeah, that was kind of all the things that I wanted to um, kind of go over, cover here. Um, yeah, I mean, this this assignment is maybe a little bit reversed um, in terms of where the difficulty is for the previous one. So um, I think, like I said, I think most most people will find this a little bit easier. The the the, the most difficult tasks. I think are in task two, but they're even even them, they're not too difficult, right? And once you get one of them, the other is pretty similar. So, so once you get the first one probing for available slot, the probe for key slot is pretty much the, uh, it's almost the same, with a slight modification. So, and then once you have those working, uh, it, it does make uh, the implementation of our public APIs for the our, our hash dictionary relatively simple. So they're, they're mostly just reusing those functions and doing something with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, the the slot um, the index is returned, uh, determining if it was a successful search, a successful find, or determining if uh, first determining if the value trying to be inserted is a duplicate, throw an exception if you don't have that. So, um, all right, any. Anybody want to ask a question here before I wrap up things?
Um, if not, um, I will go ahead and end the session here, like usual, get this posted for the people that are watching these uh, offline asynchronously. Uh, I'm going to try and um, um, grade or get feedback tonight uh, for people that are working on this, the, the assignment 10 early here. Um, hopefully, I'll get a few of them out of the way. We'll see if anybody uh, gets it finished tonight or not, like I've been suggesting. Um, all right, so that's it for the session. Uh, send an email, um, and I'll see you guys later then.